barriers to unearth things that, for instance, were in the budget, but no one paid attention to them, and yet they can affect the way you do business. And tonight we're discussing marine insurance. That sounds technical, but we're going to break it down in a moment. Welcome back. My guest today is uh, Madam Ruth Namuli from the Insurers Association of Uganda. Marine insurance. People who hear marine insurance sounds technical. We want to break it down. Mm -hmm. Ruth, what is marine insurance? Thank you. Um, marine insurance is basically a type of cover that focuses or that covers insurance uh, or loss or damage to goods or or items or cargo while in transit in, in, in layman's language and it's often in Uganda currently um, to the, to the total, total premiums within the industry it contributes about 6.3 percent um, it's often required by largely traders for, for the imports as well as exports I wouldn't say if you're exporting your goods you wouldn't cover them for marine insurance so Ruth we are talking about um, the Casita people uh, maybe manufacturers and anybody who's bringing stuff in containers recently by the way yesterday I think the Port Bell route was okay. opened through the Salaam mm. so are we talking about that generally yes transit by sea by rail by road, by by airplane, okay. for something to to be to to become or for an item to be uh, insured under marine, it should be carried. So those are the goods that we bring in for the traders uh, across both yeah. SMEs as well as manufacturers, and um, even even vehicle importers okay. that that don't necessarily drive them. They carry them through even. Even if it's a plane that is being put on another plane or on a mm -hmm. ship, mm -hmm. it becomes actually cargo. So it, it becomes, um, they take out a marine cover as well. Okay, so we're talking about importers now. Why should I, supposing I bring this stuff and there's no trouble that happens to them and what, why should I insure, really spend money insuring my <laughs> imports? Uh, we believe insurance is more of an, a necessity for business continuity mm -hmm. just in case it does not happen today it could happen any other time so loss of income mm -hmm. to your business you would at least recoup part of that income okay. through insurance and ensure you continue to export and stay in business okay yes what are some of the um, risks uh, that, that marine... someone could face uh, uh, the, the cargo would, that, that would cargo endanger could... cargo on its All way, right. for example, to Uganda. All right. If it's if it's by ship, probably it could it could get damaged through through water, through floods. Mm -hmm. uh, it could get damaged through or break while in transit. Um, so at times, even the shipment that mm -hmm. comes in, there are certain aspects that you don't have control over. So by the time the goods get here, they are either not what you actually requested for as mm -hmm. by your bills of lading, okay. or it's not, it's not what you paid for. So at that moment, you're able to, 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 to get back to the shipping company mm -hmm. and, and, and get them covered. They're also covered for fire. They're also covered for theft. Yes. Uh, and I'll give an example. Tell me if I'm on the right course, uh, track here. Vehicles sometimes come and they have uh, a lot of stuff in them. Maybe good tires. Um, the dashboards are okay. Maybe there are additional things. Mm. And yet something happens along the way. In Mombasa, people steal those things. And by the time a vehicle comes to Kampala, those things are gone. Does the insurance cover that? Insurance would cover it, mm. especially if at the at that transaction or at the time you're getting your invoice or your bill of lending, lading of what you're actually bringing on board to the ship. Yeah. All those have been declared mm. on that bill of lading or invoice. Mm. So if that has been declared and it reaches Uganda and yeah. some of those things are not available, then yes, insurance should be able to pay for it. Okay, I got a tip there for our importers. If you are going to um, insure the goods, you must mention... It's actually clearly stated mm. what exactly is being brought mm. on board. Even in the packaging list or if it's in a container, they will definitely give you a list of what is contained or what you've bought yeah. within that particular consignment. Okay. Yes. Very good. Now let's move on to the heart of the matter. Yes. In the budget, um, the minister 
read that there is this animal called marine insurance and now it's going to be required some changes happen tell us about the changes first of all all right to mention the changes we have the new insurance act for 2017 that mm. came became enacted on 30th march 2018 yeah. and uh, under section 9 or section 9 subsection 3 mm. it has been clearly stated that all risks even persons or including now imported goods mm. all risks should be covered by the local insurance companies so the law requires us now to be able to to, to go out to the public, to be able to go out to the traders, to mm. the importers, to the manufacturers, that if they are importing goods, mm. we are able to cover the insurance so that at the end of it all, the consignment should not include both cost and insurance and freight as it has been before. Mm. Cover can be taken locally. So CIF. Yes. So if insurance is not included in the CIF, what is if the implication of that if it is local now? If it is local, you've taken the cover here mm. so once you're sending to the shipment company you're already advising them that you have cover for insurance mm. so premiums have been kept here locally so even as the goods are coming in we will be able to cover at, a, at for anyone lost yeah. during the transit because you've taken the cover locally and you can easily claim because mm. you you easily know that the, the company local insurance company yes mm. unlike before where you don't even know the laws or the insurance uh, uh, practices within the companies mm. within the countries of origin okay. for where the goods are coming from so that 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 that, that will reduce or will reduce the amount of insurance that have insurance premiums that have been going out okay and the the, the element of insuring my uh, imports coming in say insuring them in China, an insurance company in China, and uh, insuring them locally. Does that uh, have any forex, for, for an exchange implications in terms of me savings? Why save any money? You would save any money. Tell, tell me how I save money. Definitely, if you're, if you're insuring mm. across on board or from China or from Japan or from the US, yeah. you're going to use their currency. Mm. So you're going to purchase in their currency mm. and yet here you're going to actually pay your premiums within the within the local currency in Ugandan shillings, in Ugandan shillings. Mm. yes so definitely there's a saving okay very good um so um if i'm anticipating it, this kind of change what kind of uh, information should i therefore equip myself with as an importer what should i get to know to embrace this new change to embrace the new change would um, encourage all importers mm. to co contact all their insurers, insurance companies locally, mm. to price for them the, 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 the shipments or to declare or to share the yeah. kind of goods they are importing mm. so that we can advise them on the premiums and the coverage they can enjoy locally mm. and also the claim procedure just in case the goods are, are, are damaged or the goods are lost or, or they are stolen. Okay. So it would, it would be very helpful for them to easily access that information through their local insurance companies. Okay. Yes, and know the procedure as well as pay premiums that will be retained within the industry and definitely increase our premium premiums in okay. the long oh, run. We're going to get to that point in a moment. So, uh, maybe I've not imported before. We, we, we use the link as uh, a source of information for mm. people who are prospecting even. Mm. So, how do I get in connection with insurance company? Do I walk there myself? Who, do I go to somebody else? How do I get this thing started? You can directly walk into an insurance company. Mm. You can, uh, we have what we call insurance uh, brokers. If you have your own brokers, especially the manufacturers yeah. who often use brokers, you can you can actually send an email mm. to any of the insurance companies. You can even seek more additional information mm. from the insurers uh, association. They have a desk for the non life. Mm. In case you want to know more and you don't necessarily want to go to any insurance company or you've never dealt with any insurance company yeah. for any other service except third party. So all those available so why don't you guys also do okay do some effort to educate us okay that they, they are getting into this <laughs> yes money. you better come to interview so we, we get some money now the insurance sector seems to be very happy about this policy mm. help me understand 
<laughs> we are happy because um, if you look at the statistics, um, in 20, end of 2016, mm. our penetration had actually dropped to 0 0.73 percent okay. from the statistics report by the Insurance Regulator Authority. Mm. And uh, that is dropping from 0 0.85, which had, had improved slightly. So we believe if, if, if we are happy because this will increase penetration, because we'll, we'll, we'll have more people. Okay getting into the insurance uh, so the industry. more people is the penetration the, you mean? the more people yes the more premium or policies okay. are bought okay. so in addition to those that have not been buying local insurance for mm. marine products we will be able to get them on board and be able to increase our premiums because we have only about 6.3 percent of insurance premiums yeah. being under marine that is only the marine contribution to mm -hmm. the insurance. Yet we, when you look at the global reports, the market share for the marine industry is yeah. about 2 to 3 percent. But the developed markets for which origin of most of the imports, they are enjoying almost 50 percent market share on insurance, yes. which we should enjoy. Okay. Yes. So you guys of the insurance sector are in big business. We will be. If and we'll have to work with partners to ensure that it comes to pass. Okay. We are not yet there, but it will be there. Thank you very much, Ruth. I hope, viewers, you have understood these technical things. We try to break them down here. We try to enable you to make good information as you run your business. And today, we have been discussing marine insurance. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you for joining us today on The Link. News Byte is brought to you by I Safe Drive Uganda, improving road safety. These acts of inhuman and degrading treatment, acts of violation of the constitution, vi violation of civil liberties, violation of freedoms, or freedoms of, of an individual, cannot go unchallenged. I, I have to repeat this. These acts of torture, the acts of violation of human rights and civil liberties, the acts of violation of the Constitution and all other laws of this country cannot go unchallenged. Currently, our inspection stations are located in Kawanda, Nabingo, Namulanda, Namave, Gulu, Mbale, and Barara. Safe Drive Uganda, improving road safety. This is NTV Tonight. Samba ne Coca Cola and win big. Olwa lelo fena tuje ye biambalo. Olwa lelo lava wanguzi. Langio jambale kumu gongo go. Yimu se dobozi do tu imbile wamu.